what that is? Discipline. Selfish. No joke. We're legitimate. Can't fucking do this? Then do it. Do it 100%, because I'm trying to. We recognize that we are limitless. You gotta be a champion, become a champion, right? Winning is a habit because we create habits that lead to good execution and success. And welcome to episode 13 of The Coach's Show. Our special guest is the infamous Travis Lemansky. See what I did there, Ryan? I thought that was <laughs> Travis has been a professional player since the late 90s. He's worked for some of the largest companies in paintball and has been quite revolutionary in creating soft goods and protective wear. But first, we want to get an update with the latest WNXL news from our very own Haley Leva. Welcome. Hi. How are y'all? We've got a bone to pick with you, Haley, but we'll talk about oh, that later. Oh, yeah. That, that'll be the last thing I get to, actually. So uh, to jump right in, the newest team that we have added into the WNXL, which is Tiki Zohana, um, a lot of exciting news from them. They just concluded their final tryout. They had two tryout weekends, and they just concluded their final one. So their roster updates will be coming within this next week. So that will be very exciting to see because if there's any familiar faces or new faces. From what I know is that their head coach is going to be Ricky Smith of the ML Kings. And I believe he's local to Florida, so that'll be very helpful for them. And there's a lot of other pro coaches in the WNXL, so I think that'll be very helpful. They also have some of their D1 uh, Tiki's Totem players helping out with that as well. So I think that'll be very beneficial. They're mainly focusing on local talent, so they don't want to have kind of like how my team last year, we had a lot of people from all over. They only want people in the area, um, I'm assuming around Tiki's or probably Florida in general. And uh, they are also going to be playing MVPS events, which I think will be beneficial to them getting the tournament experience outside of the just three WNXL events, kind of like playing local here or anywhere. Honestly, I think it will help them a lot, get the team chemistry and tournament experience, especially if they're newer players. Uh, let's see. Other than that, they're going to try to have a couple of regional lines eventually, and uh, that will help obviously grow women's paintball and be a feeder team into their WNXL Pro line. So that's pretty exciting for them. And hopefully it'll grow to be a big organization and help keep the WNXL growing. And maybe they could have multiple lines. It'll be pretty cool to see. Um, other than that, the we were wondering about like the hole that would be filled in the heroines with Brad McCurley leaving as their coach. And so they did pick up Nikki McEvers as their new coach this year, which is yeah. pretty exciting because she led the Team USA girls in Paris this past uh, September to a win, and it's a very similar roster, only a couple of people different. But So I'm assuming she knows those girls pretty well. I know she's helped out the Ironmen before, and she has a quite a history with paintball. So I think that'll help them a lot. And it's exciting, too, because she's the only female coach in the WNXL right now. I don't know of any other ones, so that's pretty exciting because – everyone else's guys and i know we've talked about it before but there was no women's coaches so now that there is that's pretty cool yeah absolutely yeah uh then on to some player moves um alex del mar who was previously on the heroines uh the last two seasons she's now playing with the high rollers and i know they just had their tryouts um within the last few weeks too so i'm sure if they picked up anyone else that'll be announced pretty soon but alex del mar is a pretty solid she's a back player and I think she'll help add to the some experience to their roster, too, because they are one of the newer teams from last year. Um, along with that, the Cheetahs picked up Alexis Laser and Nicole Gates, who were previously also on the Heroines. Um, Alexis plays the front and the back, and she's a really good second attacker, first attacker. Nicole is also a back player, so that'll help. Um, along with that, they did pick up me which is uh, really exciting. And I'm happy that I finally, yes, finally get to share that. Uh, Cause we had the, the tryout was this past weekend, which will probably be maybe like a week and a half from whenever this so show comes out. You're playing with the cheetahs. Yes. I will Check be playing with the cheetahs. 
Yes. All right. Confirmed official announcement. Um, and some people may know because the WNXL had posted it already. But yes, I am playing with the Cheetahs and I'm very excited. And with the pickups of Alexis and Nicole, I think it, we have a really strong line this year, along with their people that they've had last in the last season, two seasons, because they did rebuild between the first and second year. And I really think it benefited them a lot. So adding on Alexis and Nicole, and I mean, I'm not going to like talk too well about myself, but hopefully adding me will help. Um, and they did take second place at every event last year. And my first year on Destiny, we took second place at every event. So I know how that feels. So hopefully we can all get a win together. That would be really awesome. You know, being a competitive athlete, there's a fine line between confidence and hubris. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be the best, you have to push against that line as much as possible. So, yeah, you okay. should say that for sure. I think that you should be confident that yes. you them picking you up is going to be helpful. You're a good player. Yes, thank you. I feel like they were even saying because uh, Jacob Edwards is one of the coaches. He was like, I'm surprised at how well you communicated. And he's like, you didn't do that when we were watching you before. I was like, yeah, I did. I've always been good at communicating. But that's I feel like that is one thing I'm, I'm pretty good at. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how things go, play paintball in a new place with some new people. It's really exciting. Now, you, Alexis. Well, congratulations. And, uh, anyway, yeah, that's, that's going to be uh, you, Alexis, and Nicole. That's going to be a force multiplier for the Cheetahs, absolutely. Oh, yeah, for sure. Even over the past weekend, um, Nicole and I, you know, we shoot a lot of paint and stuff. So I was like, yeah, they got to be ready. We're going to sit that there with our 10 pods on our back and just go to work. <laughs> yeah. It's fun to shoot paint. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm really good. Well, at that. Thank you so much. We appreciate the update. Uh, that's exciting for you. And um, I mean, obviously, I would have liked to you uh, for you to have been at Paintball Fit so I can see you more often, but I get it. <laughs> for sure. I get it but only kind of, and it would have been cool if you broke that news on this show instead of, I uh, know, I didn't know they were going to post it. So soon. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for the update. Where she, promised to do that, so. she did. Yeah, she certainly did. Hey, Mike, it's a little tough to hear you. Will you pull your camera or your mic a little closer to you? Roger that, sir. Way better. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Haley. All right. Well, really quick, uh, we'll touch on a couple of things that have gone on around the league in the last couple of mm -hmm. days. Uh, obviously, the chaos of Aftershock we'll get to, but uh, first, new coach for uh, Blast Camp, uh, John Iannucci. So they have yeah. finally found, uh, finished their search for a coach. I know they uh, they have been in lots of conversations with lots of different folks. I think Grant even talked about uh, them a little bit last week. Um, so congratulations to them and congratulations to John. I had a conversation with him today. We'll get him on the shows uh, kind of as soon as possible. The Bears uh, NRG combo thing, they've released their roster, uh, which is Evan Manners, Mark Barola, or Barolo, uh, John Atkins from Nasty, uh, so semi-pro player coming up. Uh, John Altimore, Robbie Altimore, Nick Crestian. I think that's uh, not the way I said it. Uh, no, GJ Sakaguchi. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you. And it's Joey Altimore, uh, by the way. Uh, yeah, Joey Altimore and Robbie Altimore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yep. Brad Meads, uh, AJ Buffton, Austin Buffton, and Danny Del Signore. So, mm -hmm. did you get uh, second? Not a lot. Of, yeah, CJ is uh, GJ is in there. Um, he is on the roster, which is great. I think uh, he's probably the guy on that team. You know, I think he, even, you know, was last year, even though Frank was there, it seemed like uh, GJ was always kind of involved at the end of games and uh, certainly the um, kind of the glue, right? Uh, right? At least from my perspective. Uh, do you want to go ahead and talk about the Aftershock roster? Well, <laughs> I, th I thought it was hysterical how they released a <laughs> new <laughs> how they did right. that in, in so many different stages. And I think a lot of us kind of already figured out the fact that, or like, I think we know what Todd's up to. It looks like the 2020 Ironman roster, but uh, yeah. So coach Todd Martinez, uh, obviously Nick Slowiak is a part of this roster. Uh, Silos Cortez also from the 2020 Ironman along with Nick Slowiak. 
Thomas Kim from the 2020 Ironman is part of the roster. Corey Hall, the 2020 Ironman, is part of this. LJ Parrish is part of that. Alex Rodriguez. So he six people from the – and if you include Todd, really seven from the 2020 Ironman, who, by the way, won Vegas. Uh, they also picked up – they stole away Clay Hughes from the Ironman. So that's adding a quite a dynamic attack to the uh, the roster. Picked up Corwin Weber. I believe that was the latest announcement. And Corwin, Corwin is an incredible uh, player. Used to play with Columbus Level. Didn't get to see much of him last season because he was out with a knee injury. So um, they're they're stacking up. You know, Todd Adamson's got a plan. He, I think, he probably had all of this laid out prior to even purchasing the team. So I have that feeling. You know, I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I. I certainly know they're doing everything they can to keep this hype train going. You know, you're talking about like the incremental way that they kind of launched everybody out and uh, trying to keep the hype up, which is cool, right? It gives us something to talk about and keeps people engaged, which is fun. Um, I just pray that they can put it together quickly, right? To like keep interest, right? If they come out at the first event and struggle and then come out the second event and struggle, it's going to be, it's going to be rough, right? Uh, with right. all the hype, right? With all the hype, but you know the, the hype. You know, obviously the l legendary name coming back, and with the the crew that he's assembled for this, uh, it is a great story. It's going to be an exciting story. It's probably going to be the top story at Vegas. So it'll be interesting. I, I mean, as a fan, that first match, right? As a fan, yeah. couldn't be happier, right? Like as oh, a absolutely. fan of paintball and watching it, first of all, seeing them go. And I think we talked about this on other episodes, watching them be relegated out of the pro division a few years ago, that was awful as a fan, right? Yeah. So it's, it's exciting to see that that brand is coming back uh, and having several, a few players who've, who've donned the aftershock Jersey before and uh, you know, including the coach, it's, it's exciting to see um, the brand come back. Right. Absolutely. I just hope I, I hope they can put it together quickly and uh, start. I, I've heard like boot camps and all kinds of crazy things like um, but whatever. Right. Like it, it just you got to put it together. <laughs> and I think this is a great situation, too, for Coach Todd Martinez. Right. Who moves away from Houston Heat. He really does well in environments like this. You know, he took a, a young, vicious team uh, who had been struggling in the pro division. Uh, they became kind of a consistent Sunday team with Todd. Uh, he's great at kind of developing mid-level groups and putting them in the top tier. He, he's he's done a great job with that over the years. And um, I think it's a, kind of the perfect scenario for him. It really is. You know, coming off the, you know, after Vicious, he did that with the Ironman. Then after the Ironman, he went to, um, you know, you know, he, he, he had a successful – you can't look at his roster there. And he's taken a lot of – well, for lack of a better term, he for, – for, you know, not doing much with that roster. I'm like, come on. Yes, he did, right? That that was a, a constant – they were a constant Sunday team. Um, they were never not in the hunt. So, you know, that's yeah. – it's, it's not easy in this division. If you're making Sunday every event, you're doing something right. You're probably a pretty good coach and you're probably a pretty good team. Now, granted – you know, I'm I'm not blowing sunshine up his butt right now, but I am saying that I am excited about the fact that he's got another opportunity to show show some chops, right? Show what it is, and I like the yeah. word you use, develop. There's, you know, how many, and that's something I'm looking forward to talking to to Travis Lemansky about, and and you further, and all these other coaches. You know, how many of us are really developing players these days, right? Is that something that we're really putting the work into? And yeah, and it, that's kind of an, uh, an intriguing topic to me uh, for the coaches in the pro division. But well, Travis can certainly talk about that because one of the things uh, that I didn't put on the thing that I sent him that I'm going to bring up is how many of the young players, when he when they were on Infamous, are now still in the pro league that came up kind of through uh, teams that he has coached and and. Because even as a player, he was really kind of a player coach, right? Like he was one of the guys who right. was always setting up layout, yeah, setting up how they were going to play the field, and you know he's always been a, a fantastic paintball mind. So we'll, we'll certainly get to dive into some of that stuff with him because I think it will shock a few of the younger players who don't know Travis's story, all of the different uh, ways that Travis has kind of touched paintball, not only 
you know, helping players develop into professional athletes, but also through some of the soft good things he's done. And um, again, I don't want to give it all away now. We'll, right. we'll dig into that when we get him on. So right, you know, before we get him on a, a couple of real quick house cleaning things. So the summit. Uh, so first of all, the award show Sunday night tickets are now available. Uh, you can jump on uh, this link, which is not really a link. <laughs> <laughs> but you can you can go to that website. <laughs> but, there. but we're uh, getting better at this. Look at you go, man. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, we're getting better. But um, nonetheless, you can also go to uh, uh, mlpbevents.com. Uh, and up at the top, if you click on the uh, award show or the party, uh, it'll take you right to where you need to go to, to uh, purchase your tickets. They're only 15 bucks. Uh, so when you have an opportunity, if you want to go to the show, if you're going to be there, you should go to the show. It's going to be fun. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, nerdy paintball people there. But most importantly, it'll just be an opportunity for you to, um, to socialize and commune with the paintball people without being at an event. Right. Uh, you know, the best thing about our community is the people. 100%. So, yeah. So, and then also getting in. Day, oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So also the next day on Monday, March the 11th, there'll be an open portion of the summit. We've kind of talked a little bit about this. Uh, there'll be round table sessions with uh, Tom Cole, uh, with Jason Trozen, um, where players can uh, give some feedback about uh, some maybe things they want to change or maybe you don't want to change anything and just tell them they're all doing a really good job and slap them on the ass and go home. You're welcome to do that too. Uh, but if you want to give feedback about uh, ways you think that they can help to make our product better, uh, it's a great opportunity to do that, uh, especially because it'll be away from the event. The guys won't be running around like chickens with their head cut off most of the time uh, like they do at the events. Uh, also on Monday, Mike and I are going to have a free intro to, intro to coaching class. Um, I believe it's going to be at noon. You'll have a place where you can go sign up for that. I don't know exactly where that's going to be yet. We'll make sure you get that information in the coming shows. Um, but we'll, it's going to be really basic. We only get one hour, so we can't uh, put a ton of content in. Uh, but we are going to talk really uh, briefly about kind of what to look at to build the team, some basic drills to get started, a couple of intermediate type drills, and then some data collection tools and how we use that. So the summit is coming quickly. Make sure you grab tickets if you want to go. If you're a paintball field or store owner, um, please come join. <coughs> They're, all the vendors are going to be there. Uh, be a great opportunity to see some new product. Um, create you know relationships with other vendors that maybe you don't even know exist in paintball. Uh, so go to the summit. Also, it is at the Sahara. Uh, we just booked our rooms uh, for Vegas, and the Sahara was significantly the cheapest option because of the deal uh, that Major League Paintball and the NXL have worked out there. Uh, so if you haven't booked your rooms for Vegas, uh, number one, good luck. Number two, uh, check the summit. Uh, sorry, the Sahara. All right. I was going to say this. Yeah. What's that? I was just saying, yes, it's the Sahara, and and I'm looking forward to the to this whole whole event. I'm really looking forward to all of this, but just as much, I'm looking forward to learning the what I call the Lemansky system. So let's get him in here. Hello, Travis. Yo. How are you, buddy? <laughs> What's up? What's going on, guys? Look at, look at the little baby face. Look at that, <laughs> buddy. You're getting great like that. me. I know, dude. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. It's all these kids. <laughs> For sure. Are any of them driving yeah. yet? I do have a driver. Camille actually won't drive with my oldest daughter yet. She's afraid to do that. So I have to do it. And I have to get all the extra gray hairs because, you know, there's no brake pedal on that right side. Yep. So I had really a dark beard and dark. I've had hair, you know, dark hair. And then my daughter turned 16 and that went away quickly. The hair went away. Yeah. The beard turned completely gray. <laughs> I was like, man, this is crazy. Just indicative of her turning 16, I guess. I don't know. Uh, weird. Well, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Um, it, sorry you had such travel chaos getting out of Memphis the other other week. That was, uh, that was fun. Uh, Mike and I got to have a little fun, just he and I. So the, 
uh, that was cool. But we had a lot of people. Um, we posted up that you were coming on on social media, and we got a few questions from viewers. Uh, some of them were really interesting. I don't know if some of those people watch our show, but they wanted to talk about like players you had played with, and some, I was like, "Yeah, we don't we don't really do that." So, um, really yeah. briefly, kind of walk us through your playing history. And I know, like, if you went through all the details, we could be here all night. So, just maybe highlight the teams kind of you played for. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll just do like the thirty thousand foot view. So I uh, I obviously started in Michigan. Um, so the original like Detroit Fusion, um, which turned into Revolution. Uh, we won some pro events way back in the like you know people riding dinos dinosaur days, and then uh, uh, that Revolution team was actually full of pretty good talent. We all got kind of picked apart to you know the the, the teams of that day, Avalanche and Image and All Americans and, and that kind of stuff. So then I kind of went to Image, um, Image, also pretty iconic old school team. Then over to Avalanche, from Avalanche into Miami Effect, which was the original NXL, and then uh, then we created Infamous out of that. Yeah. And then what year did you retire? God, I don't even know. Um, I do know that at one point I was playing the event. And I would do this sometimes if we, like we, things started getting out of hand, I would just jump out of the game and start coaching. And uh, and I did that, and I was like, you know what? I think that the team is just better off suited if I just coach from now on. You know what I mean? Like I, I still felt like I had a little gas in the tank, but uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I yeah. felt that way too, actually. That that was very similar yeah. to me. I don't remember when it happened. You know, I was a player coach for a long time, and then it just felt like you know what, I'm, I'm serving better stepping off and, and kind of guiding the ship. It's not an easy thing to yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so a, a lot of guys don't know, but like I had like, like Todd Martinez was going to take a step back and I was like, yo, come coach us. And I was a player. And so we kind of did the whole, like, he's a really good, like player personnel coach and he, he coached for infamous and, you know, but I'm, you know, me and John Richardson are kind of like doing a lot of the plays on the field. You know what I mean? And, you know, but he's keeping us all like, mind right and 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 focus and all that good stuff and and then when 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 he stopped coaching and then um i was still kind of player coaching it just you know it was just i was literally during a match i don't i don't know what exact year it was but i just jumped out and was like all right i'm coaching <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's kind of how it works yeah it's weird it does imposing your will right because that's what a lot of it is yeah so what would you consider to be kind of like your coaching style? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like everyone, I feel like I'm still learning. I, I, I do think that um, because I did play for so long and so late into the into my career and into the game, I kind of feel like I have a uh, – maybe I'm, – I'm, I'm more – I'm not like the kind of coach that's like developing like – early pro players right but if you're kind of a guy that you think you've got it and i think you've got it like i'm going to elevate you i'm going to make you look like the superstar that you are um because I, you know we recognize talent and, and this and that but it's um you know i think my style is i don't know everything you know you know how it is everything depends on the layout and everything else i, I think that we have been typically a very aggressive team but i have been actively for the past year, like coaching my, my guys into a more controlled and methodical game plan. But if, if I can have both speeds, I think we're, we're dangerous. Well, you certainly great answer. <laughs> yeah. You certainly I'm, I'm sorry. I just had to comment real quick, Ryan. I mean, what a great answer. Still learning. I think we all are. So that's a fantastic answer. And two, for you to sit there and say, Hey, we've got this, we've got this high gear speed and I've been working on developing that, that gear shift a more controlled game. I think we all saw your success for that at world cup and, and seeing how <laughs> you were able to play that. Hey, you know, here's infamous. They're playing the pocket, you know, and uh, right. that was, it was incredible to see. And you weren't just playing the pocket. You were playing the pocket. Well, you were playing the pocket, like a team who really normally plays the pocket. And it was really something yeah. that was very impressed. No, thanks. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we drilled that for, you know, basically from the Chicago, you know, the Chicago layout was weird. That's, that's a layout you could almost like 
teleport to the snake. You know what I mean? So it's it's hard to play pocket when you can just get aggressive like that. But uh, the World Cup was a was a great example of just getting the guys calmed down, controlling zones, communicating. You know, you know, just the basics. Yeah, yeah. But there's basics. nothing basic no, about what you did there. There was no. nothing basic. Like you, you, you went again. Like I expected something completely different from you guys. We come out and play and i literally I, I started like sort of looking at the posture of the guys in the spots and i'm like they're not going anywhere they're going to be totally content to stay in those five spots and lock up and talk this is so uninfamous like this is not the way yeah. infamous like i expected you know guys going from the can out to the corner to you know behind the snake and and guys trying to fly down the dorito side and you know i would kind of told my guys like hey these are some things that are going to happen. Just go match. And, um, you know, we played that first point and I, I, it was really long, right? Really long. And the guys yeah. come off and they're like, yeah, they never did anything. I'm like, I, I mean, yeah, I know that's not like, it's weird. I even told them going into the second point. Now they will, right? Like now they'll go back to who they, who they've been, right? They're not going to do it three times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then they, you know, you did it again. And I was like, and you know, on that second point, you know, now your guys are playing in front of me. And I can hear everything that they're saying and their communication was mm -hmm. so good and so crisp and, and to watch, like hear things that are happening and then to watch the guns shift as the, you know, the players getting new information. I was like, holy shit, like these guys look like this is what they do. I told Mike when we did our show at World Cup, I was like, dude, Infamous is my sleeper. Like they're playing like yeah. they're my sleeper. You know, they're the team I think could come in and disrupt uh, the favorites, you know, they're playing the field really well. Um, they're communicating really well. It was like, they're kind of my sleepers. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, a few, few mental mistakes there, you know, and when you're playing that technical of a game, you know, you have to live and die by the sword. Right. And so we're, we believed in it. You know, we, we felt really good with our game plan and, you know, just a few mental errors at, at the end there and just, at that point, if you're gonna if you're gonna play those long, you know, six, seven minute points, you you better be prepared to start running at the end if it doesn't work out. You know what I mean? Right. And that was a field that was really hard to run on. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> really hard. One hundred percent. You know, that's a good segue. Actually, you know, what a great capper to the event to the to the season. And this is something that Ryan and I always do. We go through the season and then we ask you to grade it. And, you know, you kicked off, you ended the season seventh overall. So, um, but you're very consistent uh, throughout that season. Uh, Sunshine State, ninth place. Um, then Lone Star, here comes Infamous, third place. So I'm like, wow, they are on fire. But then big shift, Mid-Atlantic, 12th place. But then we get back to our ways again. Ninth at Windy City and ninth at Cup. Um, so three quarterfinal appearances, one semifinal appearance, right? Um, so I mean that's you know, it's semi considered that third place with the three ninths and that one outlier, the the twelfth place. How would you how would you grade your team and what do you think were those issues between each event? Uh that's pretty easy for me. I you know, I expect, you know, so much out of my guys. And, and I do have, in, you know, I have the greatest team, right? I just, I, these guys are constantly evolving and developing throughout the year. I, but, but again, that to me is a C plus B minus year. I think um, they're capable of so much more. And, and as you saw us develop into new talents and into new skills on the field, I think we will get there. And the fact that we didn't, you know, we didn't have this big roster turnover is amazing for Infamous because I'm typically the team that's kind of that, you know, we're not some big, uh, you know, we don't have million dollar owners and we don't have, you know, a factory behind us. So when we start to get good, we get plucked, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I think that, I think that the guys are on the right path. I would say we started out okay in, Sunshine Open, we had some a lot of new faces, like three new faces, plus losing a couple of my like, you know, star players like Cody or Harrison or these type of guys. So 
that was a good like grounding event for us to be like, Hey, look, we're not going anywhere. We got this. We can, we can figure it out. I think we lost you guys like one, nothing in, in, in Sunday, you know, it was like, it? yeah. So I'm thinking that was a highly right, intellectual gonna... game, by the way, it really was Yeah, your, your players. Play, it was a highly intellectual game. I don't care what anyone says. So. Uh, so then we get to Texas and I'm like, okay, here's a field that I can put a little gas on and, and it worked. Right. So I have these, you know, I have these, I have a good core group of, you know, youthful guys that are, they're young and hungry. And then I also have some dudes that have been around the league for a while and they, they have some, some experience under their belts. So I feel like I have a good group right now. Um, the Philly event, easy. Uh, that was a very dominant snake side field, that big complex on the one side. And I was missing two of my snake guys. So like my, my, my two snake guys. And then that doesn't mean I don't have depth. I, I ended up pulling Tim over there, but then I'm, I'm a little light on the Dorito side because I now have right. Sam and Tim only, you know? So um, that was literally like just, just missing some, some guys uh, for whatever circumstances. And then uh, Chicago were back. Um you know, I I think we would have had a different outcome if we weren't playing in a tsunami on Sunday morning, but it was we couldn't even see. And I don't know if the yeah, long story. But anyways, uh then we ended up at Cup and I, I felt like we were in a pretty good spot there. But uh like I said, that World Cup you cannot make any mistakes. And uh we had three to five that I can think of off the top of my head that just cost us the match. And so no, you can afford one or two, but you can't afford five. Yeah. I would have killed for three to five at World Cup. <laughs> yeah, that was uncharacteristic. Come on, guys. That was funny. I'm poking fun at myself. I would have killed for three to five there. Yeah. You get one. Infamous one. Beat the crap yeah. out of us for those of you watching. All right. I think it was six to two. The fact that we even scored two points on you blows my mind. So. Yeah, Notorious beat you six to two also. See, you don't look. You don't get to do this all off season. Uh, yeah, no, I do until the, I know. until we play know. again. See, you know, this is what sucks about this show is since we started doing it since World Cup, we only have that event to talk about, and so Bianca keeps pulling the short straw, and it sucks. So, all right, I'll shut up now. You guys should have played better. <laughs> okay. What do you want me to say? So. Um, you kind of mentioned a little bit about, you know, really not having many roster changes. And then you kind of followed that up with you're normally a team that does get picked apart. I was actually going to talk about that. Um, you know, you've always done a really good job with bringing in kind of young guys, developing them. You know, Jonah Jamros is, is a great example of that. I think um, had a great season, really developed, uh, in my opinion, like just watching him. Um, and really seeing him begin to understand your system and, and the things that he needs to do and um, really had some big moments this year and looked like, mm -hmm. you know, a veteran guy. Um, and then so you really only lose one guy. You lose Thomas Taylor, right, who goes to NYX and then and that's it. Right. 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 Um, <clears throat> so. So, and, and we lost Matt Rao and that was, you know, more of a mutual thing there. I mean, he, he is going to go try to develop some on some different teams and stuff like that. And, you know, totally awesome guy. Like we, you know, mutual thing there. We're, we're both, you know, understanding of, of how this league works and, and what the next steps are, but, you know, back to Jonah. I mean, that's a guy that came up through Wisconsin infamous. He's uh, he was like a shining star over there. <clears throat> within a couple of years, like this, you could not ask for like a, uh, a more like just awesome dude. Right. Like not only does, is his dad sweet, but he, uh, but Jonah is just like, if you're like, Hey, go to snake five and never look inside. He would go to snake five and just look on the wire for 15 minutes. He would never look inside. Like he's just a coach's dream. So, um, so that's coming along really well. Um, I, I think I'm excited about Sam. I think Sam Silberg is going to have a breakout year this year. I, and again, I saw really good stuff out of a lot of the guys. I mean, I, there's really, I can't really put a name on somebody that I, I thought played bad. I, everyone from, you know, like Tim and Nate and Brett and they, and Callie, I mean, Zach, they all like played pretty phenomenal this year for me in, in, in one time or another. So I'm, I'm excited for this season. I think, 
we have the right mix um and we'll see yeah you got a lot of production out of joe barrett you know you got and and sam i know very well sam's i think i'm looking forward to seeing sam explode on the scene here but i've got to agree with with ryan that jamrose is just he did look like a veteran at several of the events and i'm like man where did this guy come from so so you've got nine on the roster for this season correct right all right so that's joe barrett tim brusselback ryan hall Jonah Jamrose, Robert Messer, Zach Patient, Kevin Rudolph, Nate Schroeder, and Sam Silberg. You got it. See, I do my so research, talk Ryan. <laughs> so it's pretty good. We were talking a little bit about uh, Jonah, and the reason I brought Jonah up and and kind of was highlighting him is just because, it, like, it his trajectory seemed like he was kind of he was getting better. But it just really seemed like last year he really hit that second or third gear, right, where he's, his learning curve steepened. Uh, and he began to really pick up things that I think the season before uh, he would have missed, you know. Um, and, and maybe he didn't have to be as robotic. He didn't have to be told, hey, go here, shoot this, go here, shoot this. It was a little more, you know, becoming maybe a little more mental for him. Uh, but it just looked like his learning curve went up, right, steepened a little. So... And the reason I kind of brought that up is you've had through the years playing with all of these different teams, but just kind of focusing on infamous, you've had some pretty iconic players come through your camp, right? And who started on your team is literally like 15 and 16 year old, 17 year old kids who some of which are still playing in the league today. Who are those guys? Oh man. If I pulled up, APPA <laughs> or whatever it's called. Um, I would, um, I mean, you could go back to j -Rab. I think he got his, his, yep. his start over here. Um, uh, God, I mean, we've had everyone from Lasoya to JR to Brian Fow to guys that still play with me, uh, Callie to new guys like this year, like you said, Joe, who, you know, I feel like was, you know, Joe is chugging, chugging along on, on, you know, his team and, and this and that, and he comes over here and, and we just kind of showcase these guys and, and, you know, we've had Greg Sewers and we've had, you know, Damian Ryan and I don't know, good, good to go down the list. And, um, I've had, I've had mouse on my team. <laughs> it's like, I was talking more about a lot like, of, a lot of guys. I was talking more about those guys like J rat, right. Who literally kind of yeah, got the original. Start, yep. Yeah. Got their opportunity to jump into the pro league on infamous. Uh, kind of kickstarting his career. And then the same thing with Cali, right? Cali comes in and, and uh, there was another Eric, right? Those three kind of came in together and then and sort of Eric, up. yeah, Eric Prum, right? And he kind of went away, uh, but the other two, right? Still kicking and, and sticking around and um, both obviously playing at incredible. I mean, I think Cali may be playing better than I've ever seen him play. Uh, he is really good. Yeah, I think Callie is, um, I mean, Callie has that, his communi his communication is like, I don't even know if I know a better communicator. I, it, I could look around the league and I, I think he's just like that amazing of a communicator. So when he puts his his playing skills up there with that, it's, it's pretty sweet. I have a question regarding your roster because, you know, I, I believe it's, it's Los Angeles infamous. But you're based out of the Midwest, correct? And and yeah, and this yeah. is something that, and I'm only doing this for those who are maybe newer to all of this. Um, but you've got players all over the United States. So where would where would home our home field be? And what are the logistics like bringing a team that's so spread out together to to yeah. be consistent in practice? Yeah. So. Um... So a little background, like obviously we all were from LA at one point, right? I, I worked for National Paintball Supply in LA and we were there for years and, you know, we had the other guys that were also located there, but then, you know, things happen, you move and life moves on. <clears throat> but <clears throat> currently um, we've used uh, Giant in Dallas as a home field, but <clears throat> when they went to one layout, uh, you know, we have constant team meetings. We're, we're always trying to evolve with, you know, as the league evolves and, and things like that. So we do the whole stay through thing now. So we, you know, we always expect guys to, to stay in shape and practice on their own and, you know, 
Zach's out there multiple times per week and, and it's every, everyone plays pretty much weekly, but it's uh, when, when it's showtime, you know, we show up on the Thursday night or the Friday of the event week and we practice, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and we head to the event. Uh, we get them a day off and then it's, you know, back to the grind. You get the little two hour slot at the, at the thing. And so we're in a constant state of evolution. So I would say that's, that's the biggest thing with us is in, in learning and developing is just the meetings every night. I know it's, it's a drain and on some of the guys because it's, 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 it's a mental fight, right? It's not just practicing. We're, we're really trying to drill into these guys. Like if not this, then, then what, you know what I mean? So Outstanding. That's great. So, so Thursday through Tuesday prior to the event, that's a grind. That is a grind. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We, I mean, we took that page. It, it's, it's not like I invented that. It's I, we, you saw the Russians do that back when they were in their heyday. You saw Houston heat when they were flying in international players and that's kind of how they were doing with it. Impact had that real, real role for a little while, but it was kind of like, you know, we we took a vote. You could you could do the most of my guys are spread out now, so we have guys in Cal. You know, Tim's in California, and Nate's in Seattle, and I'm in Michigan, and you know, Jonah's in Seattle, uh, St. Louis, or you know, we have guys literally all over the country, and so a lot of the dudes now at, at our age are they're in family mode, or they have wives, or or whatever. You know what I mean? So is it better to 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 lose these guys because there's there's all these layout weekends and you're, you're flying to, for this weekend and then you're gone and then you fly back for another practice and then you're gone and then you fly to the event. And like three weekends in a row is, is rough. Right. So we took a little vote and, and our guys just decided to do the stay through thing. And it's like, you leave, you're focused, you do your thing. And, and then you're, uh, you know, you're, you're the second we land at, at that first practice, we're, we're in tournament mode. So that that's really helped us. Yeah. I love that. Part of that yeah, culture, I think you're right. That culture. Of yeah. If a team yeah. can do that, that's great. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. And you're and, exactly and most right. of our, Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I was, and most of our guys are at that point where, you know, a lot of us are either um, in the brand of infamous, like either they're working with us or for us or they're their own entrepreneurs, like the whole team. And it's, it's a kind of a good culture in the fact that like we're growing off each other, like, you know, Brett will say, Hey, I got this, you know, thing going on here. And we're like, Hey, we have this marketing guy over here. And we're all kind of like in different industries, but sort of feeding off each other. So it's, it's a, it's a good environment. That's great. That's outstanding. Great. So we're talking yeah. about practice. Did you want to, Ryan, did you want to ask him about his, we, we kind of want to ask you about your first practice. I've, has the team got together? Been yeah, so, all uh, off season or? No, in fact, that's kind of on me right now. Um, they're waiting on me to make that call. So I am probably going to try to schedule something in the next couple of weeks. Um, just a little get together. Um, but I've had, a, we've had a, like such a crazy off season with, with work and everything. So um, that one's on me. We, we, we are doing, you know, the, the, the stay through practice We're we're going to go to, uh capital edge and played dynasty in uh in impact and then we're gonna work our way over to vegas um that same week um so that's that week but we we do want to have a nice warm weather practice so if, if you got anything down there in new orleans we're we're looking outstanding we would love to, we would love to have you down all right yeah, cool. well, team not for practice. this event <laughs> oh that's right that's right <laughs> So we're one and one against each other. I've, you know, we we owe you one. So especially after that, All right, that cool. slacking you slapped on us. So Travis, but no, you, I would like to I would like to set something up if uh, if we get an opportunity. If you guys are interested in coming to New Orleans, you let me know, and that way, if we don't draw each other, we can work something out. No problem. Thanks. Travis, you played for some really iconic teams, and you've been around. You know, you mentioned Image. I mean, the Malashevskis, and um, you've been around a lot of iconic. Uh, players as well which players or coaches that you've been around have influenced you from a coaching perspective kind of the most great question oh that's a good one um <clears throat> you know like in my era uh of of growing and starting we were always at least in my camps we were always sort of like 
internally discussed game plans, internally came up with things. Um, and maybe that's sort of why the way I am. Um, but it's, it was, it was always, you know, okay, I think this will work, this will work. And then we'd work it out internally. So I, I didn't, I never really had that, uh, you know, Mike Hinman style of coach where it was like, Hey, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And you're going to do that. And it's, it, I we just, we didn't have that. And, and yeah. And not that that's bad. I think that's good. I mean, I think he does develop a lot of young players like that. Um, we just, you know, we were, we were making decisions on the field, like under five seconds. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> good or bad. Oh, so, uh, so coach wise, you know, I don't know. I never really grew up in the coaching era. I didn't even like coaching when they first started it. I thought it was lame. I thought it ruined the sport because they're talking from the sidelines. Um, Same. You know, paintball when I, yeah, when I, I started was all like, you know, this sneaky and, you know, I mean, pull, you know, pulling one over on someone. So it was kind of like, I don't know. You know okay, but, you had two guys yeah, so on guess, your team that literally created a career around the fact that they were really <laughs> sneaky. I mean, JR and Chris Lasoya. <laughs> Like, I mean, could just create seams when there was nothing, you know, like, and I do, I agree. Yeah. And Mike said the same thing. Like when they started that, especially the sideline coaching thing, you know, guys like that, I mean, not that they were useless, but like the thing that made them who they were as those kind of iconic hall of fame type paintball guys, they just took it away, took it away. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I have this argument constantly i've actually just had it with jason trozen in nashville when we were stuck in the snowstorm <laughs> but it was you know i'm arguing for these blind layouts and he's like why do you want these blind layouts and i said i got to do the blind layout thing because i just feel like it's killing like you're never going to have another oliver lang you're never going to have a chris yeah. soya you're never going to have a richie mau mau or anyone that's creative and because you're basically it's just a thousand reps on the same layout and you know, everyone knows the moves. So if you want, you know what I mean? If you, if you want to kill creativity, we're, we're doing it. So again, that's just my personal opinion. I, I understand. I've talked to, to Marcelo about it countless times and he's like, no, this is for the sport and this and that. I just, you know, in my opinion, I, I, I love watching paintball and, and seeing someone rip a sweet move because it's in their head and they figured it out. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a fan of either. Like, I literally don't care either way. Um, but I do believe if the argument is that I hear a lot out of Major League Paintball that they want to speed the game up, go to blind layouts. You'll speed the game up. It's certainly on the yeah. first day and a half of play, the game is going to be really fast. So you want well, to speed the, the game the up. The argument they keep telling me is that people won't practice. But I'm, you guys just practiced, right? I mean, I saw... Aftershock practice, yeah. Ironman practice, and Dynasty practice. I mean, everyone's practicing. There's no layout. So right. I don't know where this is coming from. I practiced more when there was no layout. You're like, now we're like waiting for the layout. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you have to play a bunch of different scenarios, right? Because you don't know what the layout's going to look like. So you're preparing for right. lots of things. Yeah. No, you're practicing being a good paintball player. You know, I don't, I don't really believe in the like, Yes, I have snake guys and Dorito guys, but I can swap them. They don't have to be that. You know what I mean? It's just I want good paintball players. Yeah. Right. I still think you yeah. can see that creativity. You know, it just it's just not as often. And I think that's your argument, right? Because you saw it a lot. That it was like seeing the Hail Mary in football, right? With the three seconds left and catching the or a guy laying a good lick in the secondary. That's what was really cool about those run throughs, right? The guy who gets the three pack or wow the four. Uh, that that's really I still think that exists I still think that happens and you still see that creativity those guys who get those three packs because like you said their processing speed was there the opponent gave them the opening and they took it we're just not seeing it as often so I'm I'm kind of with both of you in this camp that yeah, I could go either way <laughs> you know, I'm not, right as a coach I like having a weekend with my guys right but I also think that we we kind of surprised some people our our freshman year uh, the Lone Star, which was a blind layout. Not only was it blind, it was a crazy one. And I think that's where um, I got to actually coach. It, it, it felt like I really got to coach like real time. And, it, yeah. you know, we walked on the field for five hours and it paid off. We made our first Sunday or second event. So. Yeah. And I think, I think as a coach, when there's a blind layout like that, you're actually, you have the ability to be creative. You know what I mean? It's not just like, 
hey, run snake or hey, play pocket. You know what I mean? It's it's you can like literally create complete game plans based on the other team has no idea what's going on yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, agreed. And that's where you can leverage styles against each other as well, right? Um, True. You, you really could. You could sit there and say, if you're known as a, a particular playing the field a particular way, and you come out and you don't play in anything like that. You know, there's it, just so it's such a great mental game that you're you're adding to that that element that you know. But I think to Ryan's point, you're going to see see a lot of fast games on that Friday, and then you're going to see things kind of you're going to start seeing Sunday paintball a lot sooner than you would <laughs> in Sunday. So it'll be just because oh, yeah. they know a lot less, right? right? So they're not willing to you know at some point take a risk because they just don't know enough, right? You know? But that's why I say like I don't care either way. I just I. I like paintball. <laughs> like I just like paintball. There it is. Uh, there it is. But we would still practice, right? We would still we're like we're playing the weekend before the layout comes out, just like we did when there were two weekends. You know, like we're still practicing that weekend. So, oh yeah, I don't know why Jason, don't know why Jason would say that. Like <laughs> we're still practicing. Oh no, I don't think I don't. I think that I think that Jason's getting pressure from field owners saying that they want the. <clears throat> They want that business, like you know, from from the layout weekends. And again, yeah. I don't know. I just I feel like we all played in that era, so we 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 know what happened before then. And I think we played like way more. So right. yeah. I feel like we now everyone everyone yeah. waits. You had to walk ten fields. You had to walk ten different fields, and you better get it right on each field because you only got to play on that field maybe once. <laughs> Right. Twice. And I feel like now the pressure, the pressure on the field owner is so there's these, you know, there was two layout weekends. Right. So the, the pressure was, OK, everybody's coming to the to my field these two weekends. So I have to have two hour time slots for everybody. And, and then, you know, you're off and you're on. And, you know, it doesn't have to be like that. I think it's a great argument that to, for <laughs> blind layout. Right. I do. I think it's a good argument. I'm trying. I'm never giving up. Yeah. But again, I, I, I'm good with it either way. I like both, you know, um, and I can see benefits to both. I do think that right. we, we play a higher level mental game uh, from one perspective, having an opportunity to play the layout as much as possible. On the other side of that, I think there's a high level mental game that occurs by you going out, walking the field, creating a game plan, going out, putting it you know, into play and see what happens. That's also a very high level game plan. So and adjusting, uh, and I like the idea. Of, yeah. Yeah. And I like the idea of players having to think through some of those things that they didn't get to do a thousand times in a practice. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, I think I've had this argument before, maybe once. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Well, I don't think it's an argument. I think it's a great discussion. Yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah. With us, it's not an argument because I'm not passing it either way. Right. That's, like, that's I, kind of, I was like, I'm not arguing. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of getting back on track. So it, we talked a little bit about 2023. We now have our first draw for 2024. Um, kind of with the understanding this season is now really close, right? Like, yeah, I think we're 38 days or something away from the first event. What kind of improvements yep. would you like to see from your group going into the first event? Um. You know, I, I think I am so active in when we talk about penalties and when we talk about in our meetings, like, hey, what are you doing when this happens? Like, what do you do? Like, we are like, I just want to continue that development, meaning um, my guys need to know in every situation what their next move is, and it should be second nature. Yeah, the mental game. Right. Yeah. You know, I feel like we have the weapons. If we want to go wide on you, we're going to go wide. If we want to stay inside now, we're, we're comfortable staying inside. It's just, you know, obviously, you know, we all know when you stay inside, if you don't hit your shots, it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> so it's just like living inside that, you know, bubble and they're wide. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> it's really yeah. it's tough. It gets and sometimes it gets bad really fast. Really fast. Right. Right. So just absorb the punch, counter punch, the whole deal. So it's that processing speed of recognizing what needs to happen in this situation. So you want to you want to create as many scenarios for your guys. You want to see improvement in specific scenarios, whether that's closing the game out, 
we've lost two on the break or we got a penalty that cleared aside, whether for us or them. Hey, what needs to be happened? Always know what's going to happen next. What's your next move based off what's in right. The, the high, in like, like it, correct. If you want to compete with dynasty, if you're not playing that mental game, if you're not like thinking two steps ahead, you're not going to. Right. So, yeah. um, we, we, we need to have all that stuff thought out and we have to talk about it every night. We'll talk about it every night till, till we're blue in the face. So that's, that's, that's sort of what I'm, I've been striving for. And that's where we're going to keep going down that path until they're, you know, ready for all that. I love that you ask questions too. Like I, I do that, you know, before I, I kind of try to correct a player, I always ask a question because I want to know what they're thinking you know, when you get to the professional ranks, very there's very few things physically we have to fix with players. It's the mental stuff. And so I always try right. to lead with a question, right? Like, so, and I, and sometimes they'll give me kind of a blank stare and I'm like, hey man, I need to know what you were thinking so we can help correct your brain. Like there was nothing physically wrong with what you did. You made the move, not because of physical things. You made the move because you're dumb and I got to help fix your head. So I need you to answer my question so that we can talk through it, right? Um, oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> Very often, I do. No, that. I mean a lot of times I'm asking questions because, like, you know, we're not on the field, and so the only like connect we have is good information coming back off, right? So I want good information. I want to know, hey, did you not shoot that guy? Not because you're a terrible player. You're not. You're good. But it's, did you not see him because you're sliding? Do you need to be on your feet? Do you need to be taking a step deeper in the cut? I mean, how, what, what needs to happen so that this doesn't happen? You know what I mean? So I want to know what you're seeing so I can put it all together. Like, I feel like I'm I'm a very scripted coach. So I I am thinking along the lines of my team. So if, if I can get something going my way, I'm going to keep turning it my way, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and I, I made that point only because I see a lot of coaches when a player comes off immediately correct. They want to immediately start correcting without even understanding, like you said, what the player saw. Maybe they saw something you didn't, right? Because we, we get a very, you know, we talked about this with uh, SK, you know, you get a very narrow window to kind of look through, you know, and then God forbid a ref is standing there and then you got the damn tower for the ultimate judge there. And then you've got, you know what I mean? Like the a camera guy standing yeah. in front of me. So we, we have a pretty narrow window to look through. And sometimes when I see coaches like immediately start correcting, I'm like, man, you don't even know what the guy saw. Right. And you're, that's not no, a fit. No, corrections is yeah. Correction is for practice. That is not for the event. When you're in the event, you're in the moment. It's, it's go time. That's why it's like do or die. We don't get second chances. You don't get, you know, if you go out there and you get a penalty or you get something, I'm, you're gone. You know what I mean? I'm moving on. So, yeah. right. And that's a, that's a great that's point so because, you know, Ryan was talking about that. Uh, you know, those coaches that meet the guy at the net and immediately are, are correcting him. You don't even know what this guy saw or is thinking. And that's why I think I think we're all three very similar in that front. And the fact that I do this at practice a lot during a scrimmage, I'll ask one of my guys, hey, walk me through your thought process on that one. And I'm not calling him stupid. I'm not saying they did anything wrong. Matter of fact, we might even won the point. But I want to understand something because I saw something that I think is a teachable right. moment. And so I'll sit there and say, walk me through your thought process on that. And when he explains it to me, then now I know where to start on that correction. Like, okay, I see where where there might have been a difference of, of misunderstanding or a calm here or what have you. I, I'm a firm believer in that, that players – you know, we need to learn how our players learn, you know, not our, our players don't need to learn how we coach. And that's why I'm not going to talk to an Aaron Pate the way I'm going to talk to a Stuart Ridgell, the way I'm going to talk to a Drew Bell. So, you know, there's got to be that way of now there's something to be said about consistency and having that even keel with every player. But that's not necessarily the communication path that we need to take with every one of our players. Right, right. No, and it's it's different too. like if you're if if someone doesn't stick to the game plan, that's different, right? That's a reprimand because we are in the moment and I, Hey dude, you were supposed to shoot the God on the break or whatever. Why didn't you? And if the kid's like, Oh, I got bounced three times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you're like, okay, got it. But if they just didn't do it because they're <laughs> yeah. mental, you're like, okay, we have a problem. Yeah. yeah. Hey, sit down for a minute. 
take a deep breath. <laughs> I'll holler at you in a minute. Yeah, he's right? like, I, I tried to shoot. I got I got shot in the face. Okay, you know that's yeah. a different story. And and again, right. I'm, I am a very much like if I tell you to do something and you got shot, that is on me, right? But if it's you know if you deviate off the game plan, that's on you, right? Yeah. So how do you do like scouting and things like that? How do you do your data collection? So, um, actually it's funny. I, we, we just brought on Eddie. I don't know if you guys know Eddie Tamea from, uh, he, he used to coach for, uh, excessive and he, he actually played on excessive, but then he <clears throat> coached them and then he helped do some scouting for dynasty. He came on at the end of last year. Um, and he's going to continue this year, but he's, He's basically like the guy I look to, to, to help me collect data. I am, I don't, I can't subscribe to the like skinny thing. I have to have skinny, like walk me through his whole deal. That That is still like some chaos that I can't manage, but I am, uh, I'm a heat mapper and uh, I, I want to know, you know, one, 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 but I also want to know what the other side was one, 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 one. And I also want to know where guns were. Right. So um, at the end of that, I can look at all the ones where the guns were, I can tell you exactly who shot who. I don't need, you know, all this other like stuff. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of how I do it. And I'm not a guy that typically I'll look at that data and I'll, I'll analyze it and I'll, I'll understand what they're doing to win. Um, but I'm still going to do what we do best. And then if I have to sort of maneuver around a little bit, I will. Right. Yep. Right. Make Love slight it. adjustments, but make them play your game. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Smart. So you have a, like a full-time data guy who just comes, does all the scouting, brings all those to you and is like, here you go. Yeah. You know I mean? I'm sort of tied up at the booth a lot. I get to as many of the big matches that we're going to play. I'll, I'll watch all of those, but I don't get to like watch from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. That's, that's sure. Eddie. Yeah. yeah. We recently well, brought on staff as well to help. So don't yeah, trust yeah, me. Yeah, it, it, no, yeah. I want to be in person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if we're playing hurricanes, I want to be in person. I want to see all those tendencies like personally, but right. you know, like just full day data, that's going to be Eddie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I have. Because eventually that comes into play. <laughs> you know, then you're going back and you're like, okay, game two, they pulled out this like broken arrow trick play. We need to be aware of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, the, the broken arrow. Wait, we have yeah. broken arrows. <laughs> no, I know. Like, yeah, it's course. just funny. Like we have everybody. The terminology. Has, right? Everyone I has a broken arrow, right? I have an arrow, but I call it a banana, right? Like okay. and I have an anchor and a sailor on the Dorito side, right? So like, yeah. Yeah. It's silly. But like it's funny talking what like when I hear things like broken arrow and shit, I'm like, yeah, like it's funny what like used to that would have been a trick thing. Now it's just like, yeah, that's right. their third play, <laughs> right? Like that's their fourth play. Yeah, that's yeah, what right. they do, right? Yeah. So, because yeah. we're all kind of doing, it's, it's silly. We, because we get to play the layout so much, everybody ends up basically doing the same shit anyway. You know, you may see like right. one or two variables, but I mean, that's, that's really it. So, yeah. well, let's jump into Vegas. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your draw. So you have uh the hurricanes you guys will probably just stomp those guys so you're fine Thank there you. i appreciate the confidence there right now. <laughs> so i mean gosh i think they were like 28 that world cup and there were only 24 teams playing i know there's only like 24 teams and we got 28 those bastards <laughs> so you have the hurricanes uh you have notorious uh you have uh tampa bay damage and who's the other one in there canes notorious Iron damage Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. That's right. No. Iron Man. So how do you feel going in? I mean, that's a that's a good draw, right? You get an Iron Man team that's been completely rebuilt, still trying to put it together. You, you know, again, this is really not a shot at Mike Bianca and the Hurricanes, but you you get a Hurricanes team that is coming off a, a pretty yeah. poor event. Um didn't look like themselves. And then you have Austin Notorious, who's you know, sophomore season. And then Tampa Bay damage, like how do you feel going into the event? And then kind of what are your expectations for the preliminary rounds? Yeah. So, I mean, I expect every one of those teams to bring it. Um, I think 
have to. Uh, yeah. Mike and the Hurricanes are probably in this like yeah. mental state where I was a couple of years ago after a bad World Cup, and you're just like every you were almost embarrassed you're like everything in your body was like dude we have to be better we got to do it better and so the guys are going to probably come out on fire so we have to you know obviously be prepared for that and they're going to be super tight um you know damage i think also was was probably big chip on their shoulder i think they had some pretty high expectations for cups so they're probably pretty fired up um notorious i don't really know exactly what's going on over there in terms i know you left and i know that they have uh you know picked up some dudes um they've you know whatever um so i'm not really sure what's expect there and then um who was last team uh oh ironman i dude i I mean ironman's got a good squad now i mean henry and omara i mean those dudes are solid i you know tom guest solid i mean these guys have some experienced good players i think they're gonna be uh, you know, you, you can't take those guys lightly. We're going to have to really game up on that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I love that. You, you know, I don't think there's a team in the league this year that you can take lightly. I mean, they're all going to be good. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like we might not have the data on everybody and all their roster moves yet, but I think that uh, it's pretty even and it's, it's kind of gotten evener the last couple of years. If that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's definitely it's evener. evener. Yeah, it's evener. It's evener. Uh, I'm using it. Yeah, we're bringing it back. We've talked a lot, we talked a lot right, about cool. that on the show where, you know, um, this may be the first time in a really long time, maybe ever, that legitimately all, and we'll know right after the first couple of events if this is real or not, but like each, all 20 teams could be pretty good. You could see a, a decent amount of two and 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 two, and two um, type type brackets you know so uh it is exciting to go into a year thinking you know hey this could be maybe the most competitive year we've ever seen we could see a lot of good parity you know possibly some other you know teams winning some events this year maybe a a hurricanes an infamous a diesel uh you know you don't know right and so i think that kind of excitement going into uh the season is is created a a a little bit of a a buzz and and certainly with aftershock doing what they're doing um it's created kind of a neat uh number one it's a great story right um it's a great story that's great yeah yeah we could be going into a year where not only you know is an iconic brand coming back into the into the league but also all 20 teams could be pretty good they could be we don't know, but yeah. it could be. That's right. So, how do you feel? I'm gonna like make you answer. <laughs> what do you? Sure. How, what do you? What do you think your? Uh, he, he your, your yeah. What do you think your record is gonna look like uh, going into Sunday? At the first event. Yeah. Um. I think we will be. I mean. Obviously, my goal is four and zero, but I would say three and zero would be probably a pretty or three and one. Sorry, would be a pretty realistic expectation. I think you can count on learning your way through that division. Yeah, that actually that's a great perspective because that's that's kind yeah. of the, the perspective I'm taking. Right, I'm going to learn our way through that prelim bracket. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, hurricanes and damage. And us were all like top eight teams last year, right? So these are Sunday expected teams. So you're gonna, you know, hopefully there's not that like three way tie goofy thing, but it's, you know, you just have to manage point spread and and work through it. That's right. Control yeah. what you can control. Yeah. And the reason I asked her, like, give me kind of a number is if you guys win the event, we'll have you back on the show. We want to talk about this. Like you were right, you know. <laughs> You were right. You went three and one, right? So, um, and I do think that's probably a reasonable expectation, you know, for you. Um, actually, for either one of you to say three and one would be, you know, that's probably a good expectation. So, okay. I'll take a Sunday appearance. That's, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> let's get to Sunday. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about uh, infamous paintball and pro DNA. Uh, I think there's a lot of people. Um, and then I always, because, you know, I've been around a long time, I've been in the sport, I've been able to watch some of these, uh, brands and organizations kind of grow up and some of them sort of fade away. And, 
you know, the industry has changed obviously a ton, uh, where you used to have, you know, all these mom and pop brands, and now you really just have like a handful and you, uh, with pro DNA, uh, were kind of a catalyst in reintroducing, in my opinion, to the marketplace, something different, right. That wasn't from one of the big couple of companies that were putting, uh, you know, soft goods and, and now hard goods and the bags and all the things that you're doing kind of back in the marketplace. And I think Travis, like from my perspective, you have kind of spurred what we've seen now in this resurgence of things like hormesis and, you know, even what tank dangle is doing and, and some of these more mom and pop style brands, um, tell our listeners, especially the young ones who may not know kind of your history and background in the industry, like the different brands that you've kind of worked with, some of the products that you've helped to develop and and what got you to where pro DNA is. Yeah, sure. I'll give you like the quick 30,000 foot view because I, this is a very long story, but basically like in my pro career who I, I, I felt like I played in the top, you know, echelon of, of pro teams. Um, I, I just kind of realized that I wasn't going to be, you know, a pro athlete in paintball. So I had to get involved in the sport somehow. So I, when I graduated college, I ended up going to work for Crossman, which is like a BB gun company, air gun company that, that was, and I worked there for a very short amount of time before I got hired to go opposite from New York to San Diego to JT and JT was just kind of coming out. Right. They had, they had been around for a couple of years in paintball, but you know, was a big motocross uh, company. Um, and there I was doing sales, Great. Lo love that job. Um, <clears throat> learned a ton. John Gregory is pretty much a marketing genius. Um, and he was the the original owner. But then, you know, they got bought out by Brass Eagle and then K2 and a lot of little weird buyout things that I wasn't really prepared for. And then I got offered to go work for National Paintball Supply in L.A. Uh, and, and that's when I started to work with Ryan because um, Ryan worked for National, but he was in Texas. Um, and then at that point, the owner of national Gino was like, Hey, uh, I love JD. Can you help me? I want to do this brand called empire. And I was like, cool, let's do it. So then we like, we did a lot of empire stuff and, uh, invert and some of those kind of brands. And, you know, that went on for a lot of years and there was some market consolidation, uh, and, you know, we're getting bought out or it, it became key. And then it, then we got bought out by GI and then I went to Falcon. I mean, it, it's, I've kind of worked for everybody at some point or time <clears throat> and always, almost always in the product development segment. Um, and then when my non-competes ran out, uh, I, I was, I was doing foundation, which is my heated apparel company, but I, 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 I still loved paintball. Like I think like I paintball gave me so much in life and I always felt like I had to give back and I loved the team and I didn't want to abandon all that stuff. So, um, I was like, all right, let's, let's create this infamous paintball brand and let, let's hopefully it can like sustain the team. Cause it's, a, it's pretty expensive to run a pro team. Right. So oh, yeah. you gotta sell a lot of t-shirts to do that. And, uh, and, and so, so basically I, uh, came up with some products that, you know, I had already, you know, knew how to make and, and kind of knew what the industry wanted. And then, you know, the rest is history and and now that's why we call it pro dna is because you know we're pro players and we're it's in our dna you know so it's you know we're, we're making good stuff so that was a very marketing. humble answer pro dna thing is incredible <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and that was a very humble answer like um you basically i mean created really a lot of the stretchy things that people like the the way you meticulously went through products to make sure that when they hit the market, they were right. Um, you know, I, I've been around lots of different people in product development. I've never seen anybody who was as meticulous a kind of about each stitch as you were, you know, talking to all the different players about, you know, the inseams of the pants and, you know, again, where the stretchy material, if it was too low or too high on the leg, I mean, uh, you spend a lot of time where now I think uh, so many of these companies and less maybe now because they're, they've gone away from a lot of the padding and, and stretchy stuff. But, you know, back in the day, it was like as soon as you put something out in the Empire brand, it seemed like the next year another company put out something almost identical. Right. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I, again, I think you're being pretty humble in that deal. But the reality is your your walk 
uh, through your professional life, I mean, got you to where you now have this vast amount of knowledge about how to create these products, which has made pro DNA kind of what it, what it is and then what it can be more because you are incredibly meticulous and you give a shit because you're, you're in the, in the industry. You're not just some knucklehead yeah. coming in and <clears throat> stuff out. So. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. No, we, I mean, I believe you just, if you can't do something the correct way, just don't even do it. Right. So that's why we're, you know, that's why we're building stuff and, you know, thank, thank God the people are fans of it and it's, it's doing well. So, you know, that's all good, but, uh, but yeah, you know, I've had a lot of experience at this and, uh, it's, it's, I would encourage anybody in paintball that is looking to do their own thing, whether it's, you know, yeah, I see new guys making different things. I, I love it. I mean, I think that's like the future, like the small brands, everyone pushing, you know, having 97 marketing departments pushing, uh, for paintball is better than just having four, you know what I mean? So. Absolutely. I, I love the small, I love the small guys. I love the underdogs. Um, and, and hopefully everyone in keeps, you know, supporting their, you know, these, these local brands. Yeah. So where can people go find your stuff? Um, our stuff is all on infamous So whether it's, you know, protein in our protective line or, or, or any of that other stuff, it's, it's all on infamous paintball. So what about teams who you, you guys sell paint at the events too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other story, but I, I mean, this is probably the right platform for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, everyone knows paint drives the industry. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, sometimes companies can use that leverage to, force you into using their gear or their products or whatever. And so, you know, you already know my back plan of like, I want to have my pro team that these dudes I love and I want to keep supporting paintball and this and that. And, and it sort of comes down to, if you're not in the paint game, um, you're going to be manipulated into using whatever product they want you to use. So, uh, if you want to control your own destiny, if you want to, you know, it, you know, so we basically have made partnerships and collabs and this type of stuff to, uh, to continue on what we're doing. And if, you know, there's a lot of little brands, like, again, I'm, I'm going to keep going back to this, but there's, there's these other brands if you want to support them, but, but these, you're hearing some like, Hey, we have to use this paint or use this, whatever. Um, you can shoot our paint. We will sell you paint and you don't have to use any of our gear. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's an option. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah, that's so why we do it. That's it. That's it. I don't think enough people know that. Yeah. I don't think enough people well, know that because you're, you're absolutely if, spot on. It, yep. I mean, it was that way for a decade and nobody could do anything, right? Like because there were right. only one or two paint manufacturers even showing up, right? So you had basically right. one or two different clothing options. Everybody's wearing these five or six different masks. Everybody's wearing like two different clothing brands. I mean, that was kind of it, right? So if teams want to sign up and they want to shoot your paint, do they also do that at infamous paintball.com or. Yep. Yep. There's a whole, just like, Hey, do you want to shoot our paint? Here it is. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and obviously like we, you know, we've, we've partnered with ProShar. They are probably the number one, like paintball in Europe, but not everyone knows them here. Um, they make a great ball. Uh, we're just kind of a face of them over here strictly, you know, like out of our, partnership with them right like so they were like hey we want to be over there but we're a european company and we're like yeah well we're over here but we need paint so it's, it's kind of worked out but uh but that's that's literally it we're, we're we're just trying to have an alternative to uh you know corporate paintball at this point yeah well played it's awesome yes mike you got any additional questions man he's i i I, I think that's fantastic about pro DNA. You've, you've asked all the questions that I'm certainly interested in. And this has been a, a, a lot of fun for me because, you know, big fan, Travis always have been. So, you know, you and John, oh, I Rick, it. And, I, and, I, and, uh, you know, not blown sunshine. I just, you know, I'm big fan no, of no, no. the way you've promoted the team. You've marketed the team, just your story in general on how you took infamous to where it is. It's just, it's a master's game in, uh, 
you know, in, in, in moving things forward. So thank you for that. And congratulations and all your success. Oh, no problem. I, I appreciate you guys having me. And I want to say, I, I honestly, I'm super impressed with both of you guys and your coaching uh, endeavors and how successful you guys have both been. And it's pretty, pretty amazing. You know what I mean? Like you guys are like really taking, you know, your coaching, your teams and your level up to a different level that it's, it's making this a, a real professional sport. We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> I will say too, it's been, um, you know, I, I was so blessed. I got to be a part of, you know, as a witness to kind of a big part of your journey through, you know, the Miami effect thing. And then the infamous change and watch sort of the chaos of how that occurred. And then, you know, sort of the redemption story coming out of it. And, you know, how I thought the team would kind of dissipate and sort of fall apart, you know, once all the other guys left and you kind of stuck around and kept everything together. Um, and it's been, it's been a, a pleasure to kind of watch the whole story unfold. And, um, you know, certainly now infamous has got to be, I mean, you've got to be one of the longest running teams in the league at this point, right? Dude, 20 years this year. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Right. So you've got to be one of the longest running teams in the league. I, I love mean, it. Um, it's really, yeah, it's, and it's a great story, right? Of how the team sort of, you know, during that first NXL, you know, I don't want to get into all the politics of that, but you know, that first NXL thing where, you know, your guys were kind of told. I'm always in this weird <laughs> politic thing. It's weird. Yeah, you can't play over here because <laughs> you're playing over here. And uh, you guys were just uh, like, okay, well, we're going to do it anyway. Right. And then the spray paint thing was awesome. Uh, it's so fun to watch. Um, and, it, you know, we got to win a, the, the same tournament. You guys were playing pro and we were playing semi pro in that Denver 2004 event um, and then had way too much fun that night. But that was kind of a, a cool redemption story, you know, of how that team and hopefully at some point somebody's got to do a documentary on you guys and talk tell that story because it's yeah. so good right uh, yeah. and certainly during that dark period and then the resurgence where the team is uh, really competitive again and it's been a, it's been a pleasure to watch what you've you've done with the group and just a mass uh, ton of respect for you and uh, your resilience and obviously you have a you know wonderful wife who's very supportive of paintball and uh, loves what you do and uh, just happens yeah. to work in the in the deal as well which is great so and how many so you have four kids oh yeah i have four girls loaded for bear four girls goodness gracious and hopefully you have guns <laughs> we have lots of we guns. got a couple yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i still love brother thank you so awesome. much for uh spending some time with us and it's again it's been a, a joy and uh good luck uh in las vegas uh, we'll see you there All anybody right, listening i appreciate you guys having me yeah, go check out right, infamouspaintball.com, buy some bullets, right. and uh, go check out all the gear. <laughs> all right. And don't forget, we're going to practice each other sometime this year. <laughs> Let's do it. See you, buddy. Why don't we do it, the, why don't we do it right now? There's no layout. <laughs> There's no layout. We could. We could. I'll be sure to tell you all about the right. Ironman. All right, I'll call you, I'll call you this week. Why all don't right, you just good. go play him and the Ironman? <laughs> on a no layout thing and then you guys that's the three the three of that's you what guys i'm saying get together and go play well i think that's a great idea because we've got the iron men coming to us this um, weekend here what this off layout weekend i think i think the 17th and 18th so like three weeks yeah oh maybe we could do that maybe we'll do that we well, hang out in the will. green room and we'll uh we'll see you in five minutes <laughs> all right we'll talk about we'll that. sort it out <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Sorry, Thank viewers. <laughs> I was like, are we doing this now? We can put them in the green. This room. is we real paintball, by the way. This is what goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Did I tell you about Thanks. so and so? Yeah. Thanks cool. again. So, yeah. All right, that was fun. That was good. That was good. I can't I can't wait to talk to him. And of course, I gotta call Shane now because he's gonna see this and he's gonna say, You're not gonna tell Travis about us. And I'm like, no. Well, again, I think it'd be cool if you guys all got together 
you know, you're in the same pool, but who gives a shit? Cause it's not a layout. So just yeah. go play and have fun. No, and, it's not a layout. Um, and, and listen, any opportunity, you know, me, uh, Ryan, any opportunity I get to be around another coach, another guy that I respect that I see who is, is done. I mean, you can't, you can't ignore what Travis has been able to accomplish, uh, not just yeah. throughout his career, but with the infamous team. And, and I'm just, I've just really enjoyed that. And I've enjoyed getting to know all these different, and I'm a sponge, man. So if I have an opportunity to have him in my house where I can sit there and watch and learn, like I did with you, like I've done with all those other coaches, then I'm going to do that. So when, when I was uh, coaching notorious during their uh, semi-pro season, Travis, the infamous guys would go to paintball fit and play uh, diesel and I'd go sit behind, like he probably doesn't even know that I did this, but I would go sit behind him while he was sitting under the perch, right? He didn't go up top. He said he likes to chew on sunflower seeds, right? So he'd be down below, like, you know, chewing on sunflower seeds. And yeah, I do too, um, especially when it's hot. Right? Sunflower yeah. seeds are great. But um, I'd go sit behind him and kind of listen to him, you know, talk to his guys and uh, listen to the things that he was focusing on. And, uh, yeah, he's he's a smart guy. Great coach too. So awesome. Well, great episode, right. man. So don't yeah. forget to buy your um, tickets to the summit. Uh, make sure you uh, jump on mlpbevents.com. Uh, stay at the Sahara because that helps the league. And it's I think it's probably the best, most cost effective thing you're yeah. going to find. Uh, certainly appears that way. Uh, and then next week we have Todd Adamson who's going to be here. We wanted to wait until they have an actual roster to talk about. Uh, so Todd Adamson will be on next week and hopefully Todd Martinez as well. Um, and then the next week we will have, um, you know, I don't remember. We'll talk about that. I guess next week. <laughs> I think aren't, isn't that the week that three or four of us like SK and, and Shane are going to get together and we're going to give our analysis heading into Vegas. Nah, that'll be the week, uh, the layout. Come, yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. We'll talk about that next week. Okay. Yeah. Talk about oh, like Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith. From, Ryan yes, Smith. Ryan Smith, the new coach to, to Heat, Houston Heat. Yeah. Ryan Smith will be on. So it'll be, that'll be a fun one. So yep. thank you again for joining us. And then also – Special thanks to Jake Jones, Major League Paintball, Alex Sorensen, and uh, all of you for the support. Remember, the summit is open to the public on Monday after the NXL in Las Vegas. Uh, and we will have our free class. So when you can uh, sign up for that, please do. We'll let you know how that's going to work in the coming weeks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And Jake, your man, brother. Thank you. And Alex, congratulations on the new gig. You know what that is? Discipline. Selfish. No joke. We're legitimate. If you fucking do this, then do it. Do it 100%, because I'm trying to. We recognize that we are limitless. You gotta be a champion to become a champion, right? Winning is a habit because we create habits that lead to good execution and success.